Yeah, probably not. <laughs> yeah, so hi everyone. My name is uh, Didier Lopes. So yeah, Lopes as in like Lopez, but because I'm Portuguese, it ends up with an S. Um, and uh, I'm co-founder and CEO of OpenBB, and uh, our mission is to democratize investment research. Um, I think it's important uh, to explain how I got here and uh, where we come from. Uh, we are often associated with an open source Bloomberg terminal, for those of you familiar, which is a, a, a financial um, terminal. But my background is not finance. My background is engineer. I have a, a master's in engineering. And so what happened is you spend so much time with engineering. You spend so much time developing code. Everything is optimized for efficiency. And everything you do is like fast. You, you learn like keystrokes. You learn how to code like fast. And then I started learning about finance. <laughs> I was in the complete opposite side of the spectrum. Like everything was manual. It was a lot of manual labor. Like the more I learned about finance, the more time I was spending on, on, on doing research because there was not a, like a streamlined way to do anything. I couldn't have access to the data simply. I would have to uh, query this data source and then the way to interact with that data would be different to another one. And it was just honestly painful. I went to spending like 30 minutes doing research to spending like the entire weekend. And so that really bothered me. And um, this was during COVID. Um, my flight got canceled, so I couldn't visit my parents. And so I had a week to kill, and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to build what I have in my mind that would be nice for me to, to uh, optimize the way I do investment research. And so that's what I'm going to talk a bit about today. That's the OpenBB terminal, and that's the project that um, uh, is the number one in terms of like GitHub stars on GitHub uh, on the top of uh, finance to with uh, 23,000 uh, stars, over 23,000 stars. Um, but yeah, let me talk about OpenVB. It's actually uh, interesting. Like yet yesterday, I did this tweet because I basically woke up and I realized OpenVB has been two years since our incorporation, and I realized how much we achieved like in such a short period of time. And so this is like our suite of products. So we've got the OpenVB Core, which is the SDK, and basically you are you, you can build on top. Today is like a, a pip, like true pip um, uh, install, so it's like a Python library. But our new version will allow you to build like web apps on top. And what we do is we sit at the intersection between data sources uh, in financial data and, and users. And so we standardize the data and aggregate data from all of these data sources, and we allow users to uh, have access to that data. And so we don't take ownership of the data. We actually enhance like, the data that the users provide, because then as a user, you have access to multiple data sources from a single place. And then we've got the OpenVB terminal, which is every, all of this is literally open source. So you can, you can fork the project. You can build on top. It's the MIT license, so it's the most permissive. Then on the right side, we have uh, OpenBB Bot, which allows you to query financial data from Discord, Telegram. Uh, and on the left side, we have uh, our commercial products uh, that we are announcing uh, in the next few months. So uh, OpenBB Terminal Pro and uh, uh, Excel Add-in. But let's talk about a bit the terminal, which is uh, the most interesting one. That's the one uh, I start, and that's the one that we've been building for the, the longest time. And so why, why is it like, why is the OpenBB terminal like famous today? And there's a few reasons. Um, when, particularly when we compare uh, against the Bloomberg terminal, right? So first of all, it's fully open source. That means that you can you can trust the code. You can see the code. We've got over 200 contributors. That's a lot of like developers from all around the globe that bring innovative ideas to the project. Then it's free to use. There's no cost associated with it. Um, only the cost of data, if you want. So. All of the data providers that we ingest today, they allow you to register onto their website, you get an API key, and you use data for free. If you want to get access to more requests per minute, or you want a longer time horizon, then it's fine. You, you pay for a subscription tier, and you know, you're getting value out of the, the data, so it, it just makes sense. And then it's developed in Python, which is like where the financial industry is going. So um, I see that in, in first hand, like uh, two years ago when we started, it was like everything Excel, now like even CFA program is starting to uh, have like Python module and it's very interesting, like it's moving fast on the, on the academia um, side. And then you can access it from, from anywhere. If, for those of you that are familiar with Bloomberg, you need to be, go to campus, you need to have like your own password. And here, you know, you can download it on your like laptop anywhere, you can use it at home. And so, because of that, it's easy. And today I'm going to show you how we integrate the time GPT-1 into OpenV Terminal. And as I don't like slides, this is my last slide, and now it's a live demo. <laughs> um, yeah, so I created a routine. And uh, a routine for us is our way to, uh, let me just show how the terminal works a bit. So basically, um, 
let's say I'm into the stocks menu, so these are like menus, those are commands. Here is like data that I have loaded, and let's say I want to load Apple, I load Apple, and then I do a candle chart, and I visualize the data. And that's pretty much how the terminal works. Let's say that I want to do something faster, I can create a pipeline of commands. So I can go into fu fundamental analysis, I can uh, check the price targets for the ticker, I can, I can go back one menu, I can go do technical analysis, and I can do an exponential moving average with the length of 50 and 200. And then all of these runs. And so you can automate uh, like a lot of process, because this can be like infinite, <laughs> pretty much. Um, and here you see the data um, of the price targets. Anyway, so this is just a brief introduction of the terminal. I don't want to lose too much time on it. The cool part of it is, uh, is the integration of TimeGPT. So uh, as, uh, as uh, the speaker before spoke about it, I created a, a quick integration. So this is not like yet in production, but uh, yeah, it works. So it'll probably be deployed this week. And uh, my integration, I called it work in progress TimeGPT. And so what this is, is basically a script that I'm gonna run that calls TimeGPT to forecast um, um, a stock price. And so here you can see what the, stock pre st the script does. So first it uh, takes an argument, in this case it's other stocks or crypto, then it loads the data, then I export the data into a CSV file, I go into our forecast menu, I load that same data, and then I use TimeGPT. And so here the, the dash D stands for data set, then you select what is the time column date, the target, and you, you select the confidence interval, the horizon, the frequency, and if you want to see residuals or not. And so from the terminal, this is very easy. I have this routine, I like it. I'm gonna do eggs, file, and this routine is called, what did I call it, work in progress? Oh, here we go. Work in progress time GPT. And then because you saw the argv, that stands for input, I'm gonna say I want to do crypto, and as Hora add, I'm gonna do Bitcoin, let's do it. And so this is all I need to do. Um, all of the process is automated. I just gotta wait. And now he's querying Nixla, so he's as fast as they allow me to be. <laughs> and here we have. So yeah, so now for instance, I can zoom in and I can see what the, oh, let me reset the axis. I can zoom in and I can see what the output is, which looks like a nice little airplane. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so this is, this is pretty cool because like I run this in, in a line of code. And the thing is here, I think that as they said before, like, like financial industry um, is all about time series, right? Like 95% of data is financial time series, right? The thing is all of the courses out there when they do like, even without using time GPT, when they do like forecasting, they use a single like time series. But, but like there's so much more information to it that like if you don't consider anything else, like you know you can have a like an accurate prediction because you're missing like all the all the story. So what Nix allows to do to, and for me is like one of the things I like the most is that you can provide not just one financial time series, but you can provide multiple ones. And so I have this other example which actually is public, so anyone can run it as soon as, as soon as we. Um, as soon as we launch this new version. And I call it Benfica price prediction. So Benfica is my Portuguese team uh, in Portugal. And so I load the, their ticker data because we have data globally. And what I did is I don't just export Benfica data to predict the stock price. I exported the, the SP500 holdings. I exported the, the consumer price inflation of Portugal and even the Euribor short-term rates. And I could keep adding stuff. So, but for the sake of not boring you, um, I'll, I just did this one. <laughs> and so what I need to do is as easy as, okay, this is the routine I like. I actually, let me go to the community routines. So everyone, everyone is able to see this page. Um, let's go to the popular ones. Is it here? Uh, let me search quickly for my name. Um, so this, we announced this, uh, I think, last Friday. So you are able to run any of these scripts here from other users. So in this case, I want to run this one. So I click on this link, and I, I want to say run on terminal. I copy. I go into here. I paste it. And that's about it. Now I just wait. As you can see, it's loading Benfica data. Uh, it's going to show the stock price of Benfica. Uh, and then is uh, like loading the other data, storing it then combining it uh, in terms of the data set, so it becomes a single uh, pandas data frame. And then we feed that to Nixla, and it's literally 
is that easy to use, like literally. And in this case, I actually set the uh, residual flag on, uh, so you can actually see what was the, um, in terms of the time features, what were the most relevant for the model. So what impacted mostly the model? And in this case, you can see that a negative impact was the, the weekday, number one and number three, and then a positive impact was the year to, to, uh, 2022 and 2020. And so this is what it looks. So it looks like my club is doing well, and probably when I go home, I need to invest, right? Um, so yeah, so, and yeah, so this is like, basically shows how easy it was to, to, uh, to work with uh, Nixla, and uh, yeah, we've been working with them for, for quite some time. Uh, I think what they are doing is, is impressive. And this was uh, the end of my presentation until this morning. So um, one of uh, our like, best developers of OpenBB came to visit me uh, from Portugal uh, this Friday. He's right here, his name is, is Jose. And so today we were uh, coding, uh, as one does, and uh, I thought, you know, we have, we have this, new, this new product, which I showed you earlier, the Terminal Pro. And I thought, why, why don't we bring this to our first commercial product? And you would expect that I would create a, a Jira, Jira ticket and, you know, create some designs, and I did none of that. I, I looked at Jose and I said, I bet you can do it in two hours. And he did it, and uh, that's what I'm gonna show you. <laughs> And so, yeah, this is the first time I'm gonna show you. Um, we have some like early design partners, but we've been like really secretive about these, but I feel good about uh, where the app is today. So this, yeah, this is the OpenVB Terminal Pro. Uh, it's still early alpha, so there's still a few, a few bugs. Um, I, I prefer it to Bloomberg, to be honest, but I'm biased, so. Uh, you, can change the, um, you can change the team quickly. Uh, there's quite a few shortcuts around. Um, you can select fundamental analysis. You can uh, drag and drop everything. Everything is widgets. Uh, these are like grouping mechanisms, which means that if I don't want to look for Apple, I want to look for, for Microsoft. All of the, the widgets that are associated with the grouping, they get updated automatically. Um, and you can see that the argument here changes, and then I can create tabs, I can create folders where I store my data. But let's go to the next time GPT, which is what Jose implemented. <laughs> and so what he did was very simple. Um, he basically created a new uh, uh, widget for Terminal Pro, and he added this little uh, icon at the top that says forecast this time series using Nixla time GPT. And so you come here, all you have to do is, oh, let's change sticker. Let's go for a different one. Tesla. Here we go, and then you click here, and let's say forecast horizon. Let's do seven, it's fine. Fine tune steps, let's put a bit more. 100, confidence levels, 1895, that looks fine. Here we go. And this is what it looks. And uh, um, the cool thing about this is this is a proof of concept in two hours. So imagine if he had like a, you know, a week or two weeks to actually work on this and, and add more, more data. And so right now, let's say, I like this actually. So I'm gonna add a quick note to it, and I'm gonna say, uh, bearish, <laughs> and I'm gonna add a note, uh, can Bloomberg do this though? <laughs> and now I'm gonna export it. And I can export this into a PDF format, and now you just wait, and it should be here. Here we go, and here you have a report, oh, of course there's a small bug, Jose, Jose, <laughs> and you can see the note. But yeah, so yeah, this is, this finishes the presentation, and uh, yeah, thank you, thank you for your time.